The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. All right, so today I have kind of a fun, weird video for you. It's about mystery tools. Um, we were kind of brainstorming for ideas yesterday, and John was looking at, you know, in all my drawers. He's up in my drawers. Up in those drawers. Up in those drawers. Uh, and he found a couple tools. He's like, what is this for? And as we went on, I started to remember, I have a lot of tools over the years that I've just amassed because I love tools and I buy stuff that seems like a good idea, and then I forget that I have it. Right, so there's stuff that I have here that I've never used. That's a very useful tool, but I've never used it. So we're going to go through, uh, look at some of these tools. They might be new to you, and you might find them uh, to be something you want to invest in in the future. And we're going to get started with this bad boy. So what, what did you think when you first saw it? I mean, obviously, it's some kind of a cutting tool. It's some kind of a plane. I've honestly seen it before. I just never knew the name of it. Yeah. Um, and so I knew it was for like widening dados. Okay. But I don't, I've never used it or really seen it used. Okay. So you're definitely on the right track. This is made by Veritas. It's called a side rabbit plane. Um, so I do have a piece here with a little rabbit that we cut on a table saw. A little bit sloppy, but it's there. So you've got this little adjustment here. This is kind of like a fence that helps you set your depth. And then you have these blades. Now, of course, if you have a, a rabbit this way or a rabbit this way, it's all reversible. So you could address it both ways. This handle moves like so. So you can get a good adjustment on there, a good, uh, a good grip. And then you just kind of ride along the edge. Right, so imagine you have a dado or a rabbit that is just a little bit small, just a teeny tiny bit small you can get this in there. And a lot of times, if we have that, we might grab a chisel and kind of work your way across and it just gets really ugly looking. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you're a power tool user, a lot of times we tear our setups down after we're done and then you realize something needs to be just a little bit bigger um, or maybe it's just a little bit uneven or you pulled away from the fence. A tool like this is actually pretty good for doing that, but I forget I have it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably put it back in the drawer and never use it again. All right, so next up we have what obviously looks like a doorknob. Yes. Right? So it's definitely not obvious what this is. You've got a little, uh, little hoochie in there. Uh, it's clearly some kind of adjustment tool, I, I would say. If yeah. I, if I didn't already know. Honestly, I would have no idea what this is. Um, it looks like a screwdriver, but I don't know why you wouldn't just use a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. So that's about as close as I can get on a guess. Okay. So. If you have a hand plane of a classic style, like a Lee Nielsen hand plane, uh, this is a Veritas, and Veritas has switched to knurled knobs, mm -hmm. so it's all hand adjustment. But on a traditional plane, you will have, well, look right here, you know, this lever uh, cap on the top, that screw. You can use a screwdriver in there, but it's pretty big, and it's actually not that hard to start to mangle this. So a tool like this, again, will not work on this plane, but a more traditional plane. You would drop that right on there, and it just seats perfectly. It's a nice, wide, essentially like a flathead screwdriver. Uh -huh. You have a whole lot of control, and you could just loosen it up like that. Um, so it's kind of a, you know, a neat invention, but yeah. once again, I mean, I've, I've switched to Veritas planes here, so I don't even have a plane that can use this thing. So maybe I should just give it away. Probably. Because <laughs> I'm not using it. I, I don't see it ever being used here. Yeah. All right, next up, we have something very important to, uh, to let's call it shop safety and security. Um, <laughs> is this a push stick? <laughs> Actually, you know what, a push, push stick, stick? a push stick in the shape of a Star Trek phaser would be amazing. That actually would. That Could would somebody be cool. do that, please? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up, we have this little contraption here. Definitely not obvious when you look at what this is. Again, another kind of cutting or scribing tool, but. Yeah, the only thing I could think of is a marking gauge. Mm -hmm. um, it, it clearly is a marking gauge of some sort, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know exactly how to use it. Okay, so if you have ever seen string inlay, very, very thin inlays like a line and berry chest. I've done some string inlay on my tool cabinet down there. Mm -hmm. You could do that with a router if you get a small enough bit, but really fine string inlay, generally you wanna use hand tools to do that. So you've got a very sharp blade here and you've got a pin. You could loosen this knob here. And again, this is another Veritas tool, not to be a commercial for them, but that's where I bought it. And it works kind of like a compass. So whatever uh, radius you want to go to make 
some grooves into the wood and then you would then uh, put your very, very thin pieces of string inlay into the grooves that you create with this. So this one is made for doing curves. There are other tools that will just kind of do a line across an edge. Uh, it looks a little bit more like a, a, a straightforward marking gauge with a, a fence on it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that is a uh, string inlay tool. All right, so what about, what about these? They look like tiny saws without teeth. Saws that haven't been cut yet. Yeah, like you can make your own little saw with it to, to I don't know, make baby like, furniture. Like a little razor saw or something. Yeah. Well, these are from Ron Bontz. Um, there are a couple different uh, makers of these uh, at this point. So to explain where this is used, it's in dovetails. If you're hand cutting dovetails and specifically half blind dovetails. So when you're doing half blind dovetails, you kind of have to saw at a 45 degree angle because you don't want to go all the way through the piece. So once you saw on that angle, you're not actually all the way down into the socket that you're trying to create. So you can get these in different uh, kerf sizes. You want to match the kerf of your saw. So once you have that cut line, you can actually drop this guy in there. And it's a very hard metal here and just tap the back. And it's a little more brute force than sawing, mm -hmm. but typically the wood is perfectly fine. As long as you're not really forcing it and your plate isn't too big, that would cause it to split. So you gotta be careful there. Uh, but you can just kind of follow the same curve line you've already created, give it a tap, tap, tap. And now this square edge here will go all the way down into the corner and you get a nice clean inside corner. It's just okay. a huge time saver. Um, other people have used in the past very thin card scrapers you can do a similar thing if it's not too much bigger than the curve of your mm -hmm. saw blade. Okay, so next up we have what maybe looks like chopsticks, very fancy chopsticks or uh, crochet needles, right? Well, I know you're really into knitting. I do love my knitting. Um, so, <laughs> no, I would guess that this is some kind of hole reamer. Um, that would be my guess, though I don't know why you would need one in woodwork. Yeah. All right. So that's a that's a pretty good guess. Uh, but these are actually used for draw bores. So if you're doing breadboards or mortise and tenon joinery, that's where you have the holes that are slightly offset, and you drive that pin in there, and the pin pulls the joint together. Well, these are designed to actually go down into that hole. So let's say you have two side by side. You would use this in one of them, and that actually manually does the pulling together so that you don't have as much pressure on your pins. Uh, when you drive those pins through, it's a lot of pressure to go and take that turn two times mm -hmm. and to come out the bottom without something breaking. Uh, that's also why we tend to cut our own dowels for that and you don't use commercial dowel stock because that can break with run out. Um, so you just kind of drop that in there, put your pin in and now you're pretty secure. You could, I mean, if you have multiples then you can kind of move your way across. But I bought these years ago knowing that someday I would use them and I have done maybe four or five draw bore pin uh, projects since then, and I forgot I had them. I don't yeah. even use them. I was going to say, so why didn't we use them when we did draw bores a little while we ago? We just did them. We, <laughs> we, did just a, did. we did a whole breadboard video. Yeah. We did a dining table with them, and I still didn't use them. I just, I always forget. So, but it is a cool tool. Just got to use it. What's next? Last, Last one. <laughs> All right, so this looks possibly like a torture device. <laughs> Put your finger in yeah. there. This is when you screw something up in the shop and uh, we need to correct your behavior. I honestly would have no idea. It, it looks like you could push something into something else, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. All right, I'll go get what it is. Okay, so this is really, um, it's a nifty thing because it's a hand saver, right? So okay. if you are using a rasp, a lot oh. of times you're, you're going to have to grip the rasp by, you know, the business end here. Yeah. And over time, you know, I mean, I've even done things with like finger wraps. Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've worn a glove. Or a gloves, right? Because yeah. it really will tear up your fingerprints. Um, but you need that for some support. So uh, Veritas came up with this little dojabi. You just tighten it down. It's got little, uh, you know, rubber bottom and a rubber top. You just cinch that down. And now you can actually, you know, kind of works a little bit more like a hand plane yeah. in that sense, but way more comfortable. As long as you're not hitting this on your work, uh -huh. um, it can be pretty darn useful. Yeah, that that is useful actually. Yeah, and once again, something I tend to forget that I own. So what are you going to do? All right, so here is a device, kind of clamp-ish. What do you think that is? I don't really know. I mean, it looks like you could kind of like... Got a couple pins there, stick right? Stick it in a fork thing, but that's about as far as I can 
go with it because I don't I don't fork things. Yeah, this this is funny, but I think it would be even funnier if I had like uh, someone who knows nothing about woodworking. Yeah, come in. that's they would true. Have no that's clue, true. but it's actually it's more. I think it's actually more interesting that we could puzzle someone who has a background uh, in some of the stuff um, because these are generally very specific and potentially puzzling devices. All right, so this is a clamp. Uh, think in terms of cabinet construction. So when you are putting a face frame onto a cabinet, it's often very difficult to glue that face frame and get clamping pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will often use brad nails or whatever it yeah. takes to get that thing secured. Well, typically cabinets also have holes for oh, shelf pins. Shelf pins yeah. So this is a specialty clamp and it's also the typical spacing you would find in shelf pins. So you put that into the shelf pin and now you have a clamp that's positioned perfectly to clamp on your face frame. Hmm. So it's a good tool, but honestly, it's one of those tools you, you kind of need a lot of them. Yeah. Um, just like, like a bandy clamp type yeah. thing. You need a lot of them to actually do a full face frame. So it's going to be a significant investment. I don't think one or two is really what you're going to want for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool little clamp. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Just a, a quick look at some potentially mysterious tools. If you go into somebody's shop and see these now, you know what they do. You might even find that you could have a use for them. Um, but uh, just promise me if you buy them, you're actually going to use them. Yeah. Don't be like me.